Well, welcome to another YouTube video on my trials and tribulations of astronomy as a hobby. Anyway, a beginner's look, beginner's point of view. Anyway, as most people have been watching my channel, keeping up, I guess, I hope, that uh, I've had this telescope for uh, about uh, two and a half years now. Uh, I made my first video almost two years ago, but anyway, uh, yeah, this, this telescope has suited me great for uh, a beginner scope and I've enjoyed using it and having it and uh, uh, of course I looked at the moon all the time with it and uh, uh, some of the planets Mars, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, uh, Mercury uh, and uh, uh, I've did, done some solar viewing with it and it's it's done great for me uh, the only thing that uh, I've I've had issues with is uh, tracking. Uh, I've tried some deep space objects and I've got the, last year I got the Trifid Nebula a little bit. The only problem is uh, uh, in video it works great, you know, tracking the planets. It, it relatively does a good job at tracking the planets enough for video uh, because it's, it's, an action, it's a live action uh, stream and of course you can use a stacker stacking program to stack all the uh, frames in the video down to a good quality decent quality uh, image and anyway uh, but when it comes to actual tracking like like the deep deep sky image of the Trifid Nebula I could only get like three seconds out of it on an actual uh, picture before I started getting star trails and uh, uh, tracking the moon and other planets like that it it doesn't track as well as it should uh, but it's a beginner's telescope and of course it's an alt azimuth scope so it kind of has to track in both horizontal and vertical at the same time and you just don't get the uh, uh, good tracking rates uh, as you should be getting with this mount. So what I've done is uh, I have decided that I was going to upgrade. Upgrade just the mount. Uh, telescope I think is, is excellent. It's 500 millimeters. It's got a nice wide field of view for, for uh, uh, nebula and stuff like that from what I've read and understood. And uh, uh, of course with the uh, uh, 2x converter and uh, other converters, you know, for up to 4x, I think you can get. Uh, it allows you to get closer into uh, objects like the planets and stuff like that. So what I've decided was I was going to upgrade the mount and and still use the OTA that came with this telescope. I think it's a decent OTA. So I'm going to try and use the uh, a different mount for it. Now. I can use the telescope as is in the new mount. The dovetail that's mounted on the telescope will fit either this one or the one that I've got. And let's see what I've got here. So I'll move this one off to the side. And this is what I've purchased. And this is the Celestron AVX Advanced uh, VX mount. All right, the, the mount, you can find all sorts of unboxing of the mount and setup of the mount videos out there, so I'm not going to go into that. Uh, it's a, uh, I think it's a German equatorial. I don't know the difference between just an equatorial and a German equatorial. But what happens is you align this, this axis this way, this way, to the North Star. So it stays it it stay this axis stays on one side and then the head will rotate uh, left and right and then the top portion rotates left and right let me unlock it see it rotates this way and this way and then the top of it rotates this way and this way to track the night sky so what happens is it actually stays at the north star and it tracks things according to where the scope is pointed and it tracks the night sky east to west basically. Of course you can adjust it north to south 
by the way you have it lined up uh, with the uh, uh, item in in the scope like this and it will pretty much get you everywhere from north to south within the uh, radius of the head. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do is is that uh, uh, the dovetail on this is just a, about three inches long and you don't really have the uh, uh, distance to actually balance the scope by the time you get everything mounted onto the, onto the scope uh, you have to rebalance it so the drive head doesn't work hard in either going one way or the other depending on the weight of the scope that's out there uh, so it can actually be balanced so it'll it'll rotate without any hard issues coming from one direction to the to the next so the weight's got to be balanced so it 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 is an even weight distribution across the tilt of the uh, of the scope. So, and uh, uh, now, like I say, this one, especially since I've done the modifications that I've done to the mirror on this one, all the weight has been adjusted, and it has a hard time getting a good balance on the scope. So, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a dovetails, a dovetail bracket, and rings to go around the scope, so I can mount it into into this uh, mount and be able to slide it up and down to balance it out. So anyway, uh, I'll show you what I do with it to uh, uh, use that. I will show you how the rings and the dovetail get mounted onto here and uh, uh, we'll go from there. Anyway, I'm hoping that uh, this will allow me to get tracking a little better tracking and also, uh, this mount, I can use a uh, guide scope and camera to tell it to push it uh, faster or slower and to keep it centered, the object that I'm doing centered in the scope for a longer period of time. To where on the, uh, on the alt azimuth mount drives, you really can't do that because the way it rotates, it's got to go left and right and up and down to where this is just going left and right basically. The way it tracks is different. This one this one actually stays in one position and just goes east to west basically and follows whatever you're pointing at in the night sky. Anyway, what we have here is we have the Agena telescope tube rings 6.3 inches. There's a set of two of them. And then we have the Celestron CG5 universal mount. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the rings to the universal mount. Well, what happened is the rings came with uh, a standard hex head screw, a hex head bolt. Well, on the mount themselves, the the hex head won't fit in any of the recesses because the hex head is too big. So what I did is I went out and I bought these socket HD cap screws that are Allen wrench uh, tight uh, tighteners and uh, the shoulder bolts and they fit right down inside of the the recesses just perfectly. And what happens is the reason I don't want to use the bolts that came with it is the hex head, since they don't fit down in there, they're going to stick out past. They're going to stick out past the uh, the, the bottom of the plate, and I think that's going to catch something and get in the way and not allow me to slide the plate back and forth in the dovetail groove. So I got these, so I can attach my uh, mount to them, and they're. Uh, one quarter by 20 threads by half inch thick and they screw right into the bottom of the to the uh, mount to the ring so what you need and you need a what is this uh, 9 16 allen wrench head to fit in the to tighten them to fit in the oh, to 
fit in the screw so you can tighten them down all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to for now I'm going to place it in the last hole here and then attach my ring to it and I will get, get another screw and then I'll use the uh, adjusting bracket the, the long groove for the other one that way I can adjust it the, the distance of distance away from them if I need to this way and that's what I'll use to mount my OTA onto my new tripod now one thing I did was just to put it together it's still loose I don't have it tight in there so whenever I actually attach it to the tube ring to the tube to the OTA then I'll tight and get it uh, parallel with each other and according to the tube then I'll tighten those bottom screws down so they'll stay in place all right now what I'm gonna do oh no I had this on back this one's on backwards can you tell how this one's got the uh, stud for the camera that if you want to attach a regular DSL or camera to it it's pointed up and that knob is this way well this one is down like this well there's also a stud on this one that isn't there but it has the threading for the stud so this is actually where it mounts and see how the the turn knob is going down well I need to turn that around I just now noticed that but this is where the, the plate should actually both be bolted onto it the plate here not down there all right I'll turn it around and we'll go back we'll go to our next step all right now as you can see I finally got them turned around right so they're both up but like I say there is another set of threads here threaded hole here for another stud if you wanted to put it in uh, but anyway I would usually put this towards the front and this would be towards the back because like I say if you're mounting a camera to take pictures while you're looking at what you're looking at through the telescope you can have a 35 millimeter up there screwed down to up here and you can screw the camera on and then adjust this up to lock into the camp to lock the camera in place anyway so what we got to do is we got to loosen up here in this case some of the tubes have got slots in the top uh, bracket that allows you to loosen it up and then knock it down and move it out of the way well this one is a little different it's a little cheaper bracket but you have to take the screw you have to unscrew the screw from the bottom the shoulder that doesn't have threads on the bolt so all you have to do is get it this out of this portion of it and then it pops open so with that open like that I'll grab my OTA set it in place like that and then I'll tighten these back down Everything should be aligned so I'll rotate this around and then tighten my bolts here down so that thing that way everything is square with each other around the OTA and now I can mount the OTA on the on a different tripod to where the see the difference between here this is the original one that was on it and so you don't have that much room to move the telescope to balance the scope where this is going to allow me to have more room to balance the scope because of the longer throw on the on the dovetail all right now that we've got the rings mounted on the dovetail and the whole situation on the OTA that's pretty much what it looks like now 
then all you have to do is put it in the slot and tighten down the holders on the uh, to hold it in place and you can do what you want now uh, the, the one major difference between the equatorial and the uh, alt azimuth mount is whenever the alt azimuth mount turns the eyepiece here stays in the same place but if you notice if I was to have it pointed to where I needed to be up, and then like this, the eyepiece is still in a good location. But if for some reason or another we needed to go the other way on it, It could actually, in the southern hemisphere, it can actually put it in a weird location to where the eyepiece is now down here, pointing this way, and it's, unless you've got a chair or something, to, it gets it in an awkward position. It can be kind of difficult to use this type of mount on a reflector, r reflector like this because the eyepiece is up here and it's going to be in a weird location to where if you're using uh, an SCT, a Smith Cassegrain telescope, or even a refract refractor, then the eyepieces are going to be here all the time no matter where you're at. You can actually see, use it better. Uh, so that's one thing about this mount compared to the uh, alt azimuth mounts is the eyepieces can be in a weird place. But one good thing about the rings is you can actually loosen the rings and then rotate the tube to put the eyepiece in a convenient location. Uh, you don't really want to do that too much because if you're, especially if you're tracking something, any adjustments you make here could throw the tracking off. And that can be bad uh, for the tracking. Uh, so anyway, but uh, what's good about this is whenever I, since I updated my tripod, if I can update my uh, Tell OTA, uh, I want to get a, a Smith Cassegrain, probably something like a 9.25, to where this mount would handle that. I think this mount can go up to a, like 11, uh, but your your uh, capacity for the head and the capacity for the OTA at 11 is almost pretty close to maxing out. And if you put a bunch of stuff on your OTA, guide scopes and other things like that, cameras then you can actually have more weight. So I think what I plan to do is get a 9.25 as my next upgrade and then I'll be able to have both systems uh, set up at one time if I wanted to for viewing and then for other things with, uh, but, uh, with two telescopes. Anyway, that's about it for this video. Hope you enjoy it. Clear skies.